And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, creator, uh, coming to us straight from Tin Hat Games, creators of the upcoming, um, I believe it's, I believe, post-human sci-fi RPG Xenoscape, the one and only Alessandro Alex Riveroli. How are you doing today, man? Uh, hello, hello, hello. Hi there. Hi there, monk. I'm really impressed to be in your temple. And I'm very glad to be here. Glad to ha glad to have you. It's all it's always nice to have have um, fa faces old and new in the in this whole in this um, hallowed ground. Okay, so, nice, nice. That's nice. So, I'll start. It's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. Oh yeah. So with that in mind, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games, and what was it that made it stick for you? Oh, man. <laughs> this long story back. Uh, I mean, I can't remember a single moment of my life uh, when a uh, role-playing game, tabletop role-playing game, I mean, uh, wasn't there. Uh, I mean, uh, I started playing Dungeons & Dragons back when I was just eight, uh, because uh, a neighbor... A uh, older neighbor had it and introduced me to that. But also, my cousin, uh, which is like my brother since I'm an only child, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is 10 years older than me, uh, already uh, played that. So when I went to his home, even when I was younger than eight, I used to see these dragons on the poster on the wall, these weird books with magicians, wizards, or... Uh, um, cyborgs, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which was really, really intense for me as a child, as an 80s child, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. but back then, we had no, uh, pr no, no internet, no video games like the ones uh, we have today. So uh, that was uh, fantasy was the only thing we had to play with, uh, apart from toys. But I was always... Uh, uh, not satisfied enough by toys. I mm -hmm. found always a limit in toys. And when I approached for the first time role-playing game, I was, wow, that's it. I can do anything now. Mm -hmm. And from that time on, I never stopped. Yeah. And I kept going on with uh, also uh, LARP uh, during my teenage years and then approached uh, writing. Uh, during my uh, 20s because mm. uh, I also studied literature in Italy in Bologna the oldest university in the world mm -hmm. and so I'm really into writing uh, also drawing it's a passion but writing is my thing I would say <laughs> so from that day on uh, I started creating some prototypes uh, many prototypes uh, in my drawer ready to be published and one day I found my my man Matteo, uh, which is really my communication buddy, uh, which brought my thing to life. Uh, so together we founded um, Tnet Games. We started with a role-playing games uh, game uh, tabletop, of course, uh, which is Urban Heroes, um, a role-playing game which is really like the Boy series. You know that. Mm -hmm that comic book and that yeah. TV series. Oh, so yeah. it's r really crude, uh, really raw, uh, dirty. Uh, so uh, you can punch superheroes in the face and it's really realistic and adult oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, and today we are at the 10th, uh, no, 11th expansion book for the game, which is uh, something in Italy. Mm -hmm. And that's the story so far. Uh, we also published several um, uh, tabletop um, board games, I mean. Mm -hmm. And now we're out with my second work as an author, uh, which is Xenoscape, now live on Kickstarter, man. Mm -hmm. and, man and managed to get itself funded in record time. I, I knew it was going to get funded. I just didn't expect it to get um, uh -huh. 
it to get funded in less than a day. Okay, uh, I, I have to admit, we got a really lovely fan base mm -hmm. here in Italy. Uh, but we also have some people uh, appreciating our products outside of Italy. Indeed, you got to know, in Italy, we have been the first one um, funding a, role, a tabletop role-playing games on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. uh, which was Urban Heroes back in uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, in Italy, nobody did that before. Also, it wasn't really possible to um, start projects on Kickstarter from Italy. So we had to, uh, <laughs> we had to ask American people to help us uh, to do this. Everybody here in Italy thought we were mad uh, that was not gonna work. And nowadays, there are many role-playing game projects uh, from Italy, which gets funded at even more than a hundred thousand bucks. So we're really proud to, uh, <laughs> to, to being the starting, to have been the starting, uh, uh, starting guys to do that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, was really new for everybody here. I can I can definitely um I can definitely s see that now. <laughs> give now um with Xenoscape, if I'm now if I'm not mistaken, Xenoscape is v yep. is very much a. I guess I would call it a post post apocalypse since you're dealing with a setting where humanity has been long gone for a long time. That's that's perfectly right. Uh, Mildra, because uh, you said right when you um, when you tagged it as post-human, mm -hmm. because humanity is no more, uh, definitely in Xenoscape. We started um, thinking, what's gonna be of our galaxies, our universe, in one million years from now? What, what, what's gonna be? So we imagined and divided era by era um, everything that is going to happen to our humanity. And at a certain point, there's an apocalyptic event which is going to tear everything apart. Mm -hmm. Imagine an intergalactic empire of men, but really um, driven by machines, which are constantly cloning people just in order to, to have the, their prime directive to survive. You know, as more flows of robotics, I suppose, mm -hmm. so machines uh, needs men in order to uh, to work. So machines were so so uh, developed uh, at, at the point to rule even over men. They kept on cloning men, but they were useless. Uh, machine did everything, and at a certain point, the everything ends. Mm -hmm. So. The planet in which uh, Xenoscape is set is called Materia by uh, his inhabitants. And his inhabitants are very few sentient beings. Most of the beings inhabiting Materia are non sentient, like a very huge monster. I mean, 20, 30 meters feet, uh, 20 meter high, tall monster um, strolling uh, on this planet. But they are totally devoid of what, what happens at smaller dimension. Even though uh, you can uh, easily understand how life at smaller dimension can't produce any kind of civilization anymore. You build uh, your house, you build your hut, and this immense being step on it. Mm -hmm. The next day, you won't build an hut again. You know, you find other way to survive. So Xenoscape is the ultimate role-playing game for survival. Yeah, and that given given that's, that that's mm -hmm. uh, almost it. But uh, it's it there's more to, to explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, given th given that, would you would you yeah. say oh. that e even even with the post apart even with the Post post apocalyptic nature of, of the game, that it would have a bit it would have a bit more in common with um, sword and sorcery, not in terms of magic, but in terms of it being a very uncompromising world to be in, and one where 
you either you either learn to yep. survive you either learn to survive and learn to be learn to be canny and learn to adapt quickly or you en or you end up flattened by some of the mega f flora and fauna on the planet yeah 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 you're right you're right the game is totally about survival mm -hmm. uh it's quite the opposite uh of your Heroes, my first work which is a totally social uh set a game you know it's set nowadays uh so it's really set in our world so everything is connected uh, you get social media you get internet and everything uh well this game is really about zord and sorcery heroic fantasy like uh, feelings gives you mm -hmm. uh but in a totally alien world where flora and fauna as you said mega flora mega fauna as you said uh developed in very weird bizarre ways uh, and uh, so every encounter in this game uh, will be completely unexpected and new uh, and that's what uh the living species on this planet the sentient one uh experience on daily basis i would say uh that and finding ways to survive because differently from uh, many other role-playing games uh here you will start with for example very few equipments there's no coinage there's no politics there's even no religions uh because there's no uh there's no streets co connecting cities uh we developed the game with the help of uh, anthropologists biologists and uh, virologists uh so we are giving a very realistic feel to this game and even magic is treated in the way as magic was treated in our real world so as a social impact uh, mm, f for example a, sham a shaman uh, a wizard can be seen as a, a very a high social skilled character rather than casting real magic you know mm -hmm. so for example there's a very special path you can go down which is the Onero Fund. The Onero Fund is uh, some sort of shaman which uh, is into dreaming. Uh, dreaming is the only supernatural thing that everybody can experience in uh, this game, but mm -hmm. also in the real life, I would say. Uh, like, uh, uh, like the prehistoric uh, myth from Australia says, uh, everything can be a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, and we probably are just living in the dream of some uh, weird uh, far gods. Uh, oh, this path you can go down in this game, for example, lets you live deeper uh, your lucid dreaming and even get to uh, reincarnate into a new dream. Uh, I hope my English is good enough to yeah. explain all of this. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, I can definitely. I can definitely um, get behind get behind that approach. And that now that brings me into a into a bit of the a bit of the crunch of the matter. Now, yeah, I'll I'll start with the I'll start with the core me, with the core mechanic of of how things work. And you just de you decided to go with. A d a d six based approach, um, like do like ro rolling a rolling a rolling a set of d six and. Oh, some... I need to stop you. Oh, I ahead. need to stop you because rolling something I don't mm -hmm. want to hear anymore, because in Xenoscape, you don't roll any die. In Xenoscape, dice are used for a different purpose. Uh, Tinskip, in fact, is a resource management based game. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I just explained this uh, in the morning during a, a game design class uh, online, of course. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is this new approach to um, game design? Uh, I don't want uh, random anymore. Uh, I mean, on the, um, on the side of players. Players uh, will not randomly determine their action. They are going to spend points from their system, and their system will be a nervous system, energy system, 
and monetary system, mm -hmm. just like a uh, real world, you know, mimicking uh, how the human body, how uh, animal bi biology or plant biology works, uh, you're going to spend these points in order to um, power up your action, uh, your checks. But you're, go you're not going to spend, uh, you're not going to roll any die. So if you're going to fall, it would be, uh, if you're going to fail, it will be your fault, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the game is really about that. Managing resources in a very harsh and lethal environment. So how are you going to recover those resources? Well, by resting, by feeding. Feeding is one very important thing. In this mm -hmm. game, uh, if you heat uh, some raw meat, if you cook it uh, with fire, with vapor, with uh, other techniques, they will give you back different kind of um, uh, of resources. Like, for example, one food can give you back more energy. Another one can also give you back more um uh, mind power, let's say, okay, so I uh, can recover your nervous system points. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a uh, very, very brand new thing I'm going to introduce in the role-playing game. Uh, but what about dice? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're going to use dice in order to uh, keep track of the points you're going to lose. How? Just by placing dice on your character sheet. On, mm -hmm. on your table. Why that? That's also because uh, we all know uh, a very old problem we all had at least once. And it's erasure holes on your character sheet. So you don't need anymore uh, to write, erase, write, erase uh, every time you lose your health points or whatever. Mm -hmm. By using dice as, as a points older uh, don't know what the perfect term for this uh, you're gonna avoid all of this and you're only gonna need to mark uh, your uh, remaining points at the end of uh, every game session so just once per session mm -hmm. and as everybody can see from our kickstarter page uh, as an add-on uh, we are giving out also uh, dice holder frames, uh, which can be positioned on your character sheet and the dice will perfectly fit inside. So even if you are clumsy and when you move, uh, you stand up to go to the toilet, for example, uh, you don't risk to move your dice and lose your uh, point marking, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to introduce uh, some, some, some news uh, in our sector. As you can see, and I, since since you're aim, since you're aiming for effect, effectively something that leans more into a diceless system, I can see what I can see why um, resources would be a thing. Now, although um, yep. I would say I would say that you're not falling into some of the traps that I've seen um, other um, diceless games fall, fall into. Chief mm -hmm. chief among them being Am being Amber, which is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll stop picking on Amber one of these days, but today is not that day. Um, <laughs> and and given given that one of the things I did want to ask about is the <laughs> is this um two is this double headed monster known as species and path advancement. Um, oh yeah. How is how is that how is that going to work and and how, and um where does the where does the Aside from the obvious, where does the line between what would qualify as what would be what would be thematically a path and what would be thematically a species? Okay, that's a good question. Because uh, yeah, as you said, uh, Xenoscape uh, characters develop um, following two two uh, two advancements. Uh, fifteen, you're gonna face fifteen levels on your path mm -hmm. and fifteen levels uh, for your species. Uh, for a total of 30 levels uh, total. Uh, but first of all, I would say in um, Xenoscape, advancement is very fast. So you're going to level up, uh, I would say, maybe not every session, but almost. First levels, it's very common, you level up every session. Or uh, one session, uh, one not. 
uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very fast uh, development game. Uh, and apart from that, um, getting back to your question, uh, I would say uh, following your path is following uh, what you learn in your life, is following your passion, is following your job maybe, mm -hmm. uh, and learning things uh, from training, which can be uh, study or uh, just uh, physical training, you know, uh, or technical training. Uh, while following your species path, your species level, uh, means uh, developing at best the possibility that the different, uh, weird and uh, very specific species Xenoscape, Xenoscape um, shows you, uh, let you do. Uh, I mean, there are more than 25 uh, possible developments for each species. Uh, so we got arthropods, which is uh, insect-like uh, insectoid, I would mm -hmm. say, um, which can develop all the spectrum of possibilities that real-life bugs and insects have. So you can develop wings, you can develop extra arms, you can uh, develop uh, venomous gland, uh, keating, uh, I don't know if kitting is a word. <laughs> um, we'll make it a word. Well, okay, that's that's good. Um, so um, you, you can develop everything that you can think about uh, when thinking about insects. So mm -hmm. antenna and everything. Uh, we got shrubs, which are uh, a plant, a vegetable, uh, plant-like uh, form of life. Um, and they can develop all the spectrum of traits that a uh, plant can develop. So they can uh, become, uh, mm, they can even feed on meat like carnivorous plants, or uh, for example, start producing fruit. And in this setting is very precious since plants are pretty much no more, only fungi uh, and mushrooms and uh, molds are the only uh, plants surviving all the other kinds of plants are gone. So having someone in your party which can produce fruits is really, really important in a survival themed game, you know. Uh, and the same goes for clones, the same goes for mecha suits, which are cyborg, squamata, which are uh, reptiloids, and even necrocordyceps, which are a uh, sentient virus. Uh, possessing other people's bodies. And this is another brand new take on uh, for role-playing, I would say. Yeah. Now, the thing that, the thing that, I, note, that I noticed immediately when I looked at the species and path level um, mock-up on the character sheet is the, is the different notches. So, I'm getting... I'm guessing that's the case that once once one once one set of those notches is filled up you would you would um advance to the next level. And oh, yeah. given that given that would it be fair would it be fair of me to say that um that once that when you end up getting experience you the player would have to decide which um which end that's gonna be distributed to? Yeah, uh, not, not the points in between levels. Uh, this is just uh, advancement points that mm -hmm. you uh, earn uh, playing. Uh, but uh, every time you level up, uh, you gain uh, some possibilities depending on your level. But mm -hmm. uh, I would say creating a character is pretty easy in this game. Uh, there's a point by system for the starting creation. And then leveling up at each level, uh, you can gain one trait or one advancement. If you level up on your species level, uh, you can choose among your genetic traits, uh, or you can um, increase one of your characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, if you level up on your path level, uh, you can choose among uh, one brand new um, uh, learned trait, which is uh, something you learned, something you trained, uh, or um, increase some of your skills uh, so it's really really easy and highly customizable 
so you can customize your character in every single detail and there won't be uh, two characters that would look the same. All right, I can get, I can, um, I can get behind that. I can get behind that certainly. Um, that's something I carry on uh, since my first game, which is Urban Heroes, where uh, given only the core rulebook, you can have more than nine hundred thousand um, possibilities of combination in creating your character. Yeah. So, uh, very high level customization is something uh, I like very much. <laughs> so. I try to uh, to bring on in my games. Mm -hmm. Now, what would be a few examples of paths within within uh -huh. the game? I can I can get behind what I can get the general idea and what's on what species examples would be, but I'm curious about different um, paths. Uh -huh. Nice, nice. We already have uh, more than fifteen paths ready, but there are even some that are going to be unlocked through our stretch goal. So please, everybody, get on the Kickstarter page and fund that game because <laughs> we're gonna we want to uh, have more and more if possible. But uh, getting back to your question, um, I would say uh, I already mentioned uh, Onero funds, which are very specific of our setting. So Onero funds are these uh, uh, these uh, sorcerer that that are into lucid dreaming. Um, but there, there are the most common ones that I would say are the warrior, the thief, uh, or uh, simply the merchant. Uh, the, and there are others that are more specific, like uh, the bio shaman. Uh, the bio shaman is something like a, a regular shaman, but they um, have a specific approach uh, into shamanism. Uh, they experience stuff by uh, feeding on stuff. Uh, so they also have some sort of, uh, uh, I think it's called psychometry. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can get, for example, uh, what happened uh, to an object in his past just by eating it. And that's, that's something dangerous <laughs> in this in this setting but mm -hmm. they are uh, they are very respected like uh, like shaman used to be uh, in this uh, in, in in the past days mm -hmm. also about this i'm uh, in direct contact with uh, uh, a big um, exoteric uh, association here in italy and uh, about that we studied um, the use uh, the uh, how uh, prehistoric people used to approach uh, the use of psychedelic uh, substances, drugs, and uh, stuff like that in order to achieve a uh, uh, higher state of consciousness, you know? Mm -hmm. So we developed this in this way. Since feeding is uh, very important in this setting, we wanted to give uh, a twist to this and uh, giving it some exoteric meaning, too. Uh, and then there's the rhapsodes. The Rhapsodes are some sort of bards of our setting, but their importance is really, really, uh, it's really, really one of the most important class in this game. Since mm -hmm. this game is in a sort of prehistoric era, so um, everything is transmitted by voice. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, um, writing is almost considered blasphemy since by many is considered as a, um, is seen as a virus which infects minds and uh, makes people do through propaganda, uh, through fanaticism, uh, and makes people do something they do not want to do, as we can experience in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, this is based on my studies of linguistic. Uh, so everybody, if you want to get uh, read at Marshall McLuhan, which is one of the most important uh, uh, linguists uh, who lived. I uh, based uh, all of this on uh, real life stuff, I would say. <laughs> so uh, these are some examples, uh, and you can imagine there's, uh, there's more like the sage, uh, like the killer, mm -hmm. uh, which is the assassin, let's say, 
but also the tamer, the tamer. Uh, and I'm guess I'm guessing when it comes to the t the tamer, that's going to be a class that would have a uh, not cl so not class path. Sorry, yet old habits. Yeah, yeah, um, that's okay. Um, would f would would focus on having um some of the f some of the smaller relatively um flora yeah. and fauna at its beck and call. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. And of course, it's uh, anything like you can think of. <laughs> uh, so you can have this, um, for example, as a pet, let's say, uh, this um, thyme uh, locust, uh, the, which are big locusts, uh, which have crystals instead of a regular head, mm. and they interfere with thyme um, warping gravity. Uh, if you if you know anything about uh, um, quantum physics, you know time and gravity are strictly connected. So mm -hmm. they do this. Or, for example, um, um, uh, a stone beast. Stone beasts are uh, huge tardigrades. You know tardigrades. Um, uh, I think I. I think I do, but for the be but for the benefit of the audience, could you give the skinny? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Tardigrades are very small, um, very very small, microscopic um, beings uh, with six legs uh, that looks like fat, small worms uh, with no head, just a mouth, mm -hmm. uh, which lives pretty much everywhere on our skin, and which are very well known because they are immortal. They can they can die, uh, and there are huge ones in the, this setting. Uh, I mean, horse-like, and uh, they are used as a as a mount very often. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can have also have that, or you can have uh, small predators and other very bizarre beings uh, that I don't want to spoil too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. When it comes to when it comes to individual spe when it comes to the development within individual species and path leveling, yep. um, would it be fair of me to say that there is some variance within within go within it so that even if you have two people going down the same species and path, they're not necessarily going to develop in the same way? Mm. Of course, of course. Um, each path as a list of traits and a list of skills you can choose among. Uh, and some extra points that you can spend during your point, uh, during your starting point by system in order to create your character. So some path will give you more abilities, uh, more skills. Uh, some path will give you more starting uh, equipment, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, very precious in this uh, setting. So uh, by choosing these options, uh, you, it's very hard to have uh, two characters, same path or same species that would look the same, really. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make an example. Uh, I want to build an arthropod, uh, a warrior arthropod. Uh, one player can build a warrior arthropod with wings, with extra arms. Uh, and with skills that relies on heavy weapons uh, and with uh, armor and one heavy weapon as an equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one can develop and uh, build uh, an arthropod uh, with maybe um, venomous fangs, uh, and um, its skill may rely on ranged attacks, and so it can choose among traits uh, which will improve his ranged, uh, his ranged attacks, his uh, aim, and so on. So uh, every time you choose uh, a path and a species, you have to customize it. They are not fixed. Right. And given... Now, since you mentioned skills, that, is, that does bring me to, to something I did want to ask on that, because... When I look at the skills end of thing, I see th I see um three I see three columns and I'm and I can ass I can assume that each of these three um has their own effects and that is 
Obviously, the first one is the total level, which I think is self-explanatory. But then we have mastery and training. Um, oh, yeah. How, what would be the difference between training and mastery in Xenoscape? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, you have the level, as you said, is mm -hmm. the, the bonus you're going to add to your extra value uh, when you need to check on that skill, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but mastery is something more. Um, you can develop mastery through traits or through high ability level, uh, high skill level. Um, points in mastery uh, gives you a discount in the cost of actions. Um, Xenoscape is a very action-based game. Uh, during during a round of uh, combat, for example, uh, you get the chance to uh, act multiple times during your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean up to five, six action, even at low levels. But these action have a cost, and the cost is in, of course, system points, as I, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, as everything goes uh, in this game, everything uh, is around system points. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can uh, give everything, for example, in your first round of combat, spending many, many system points but in your uh, late, later on, you will have no more energy to do heroic action. And you're going to do only basic action, I would say. So that's the point of mastery. When you reach mastery, you get this discount on uh, your uh, point uh, expense, uh, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, while training, training, uh, as I said, every part gives you a list of abilities. But uh, you don't level up abilities only by leveling up your character. You can also train your ability in-game. So uh, you can uh, gain training points by spending time during the game doing your, uh, doing your training in a specific skill. Even a skill that's not on your path list. Because why not? Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you start with your... Uh, strict list of abilities, but during a game, you can train everything. You want to learn to ride? Well, you can. You want to learn uh, something about uh, climbing, uh, swimming, or even dancing, or whatever else. Dancing is very important in prehistoric uh, mm -hmm. social interaction. It's even better than talking, you know? Yep. And given... Now the other now um the other thing I was the other thing I'm curious about when I when I look at it is the is the notion of traits um mm -hmm. now since since in the example sheets traits are all shown to have levels is there is it a case where there's yep. a significant amount of traits that can be taken multiple times uh, there are, uh, it's very few, but there are traits that can be taken multiple times because they are very specific. They are maybe connected to um, a specific skill or something else. Uh, I would say traits are um, genetic or um, learned. Um, genetic traits are much more like uh, new features uh, for your character. Uh, so as uh, I above mentioned, uh, um, it's for, for Arthroboids will be wings, extra arms, for uh, Squamata will be uh, mimetic skin, uh, or uh, also there you can have poisonous fangs or whatever else uh, a reptile can develop. Um, and it's, it's very curious, the case of the clones. The clones are the most similar being to a human that you can meet on uh, Materia. Uh, as we do, as we human do, we do not develop any extra trait during our life. Arthropoids, they do a metamorphosis process, uh, and then they develop new traits. But mm -hmm. we humans do not do that. So what are going to develop clones? Well, uh, uh, it will be, um, I would say, temperament traits. Um, so in this game, when you select clone, let's say human, uh, you start with a really a clone that has been created already adult and with no personality. 
So you're gonna develop personality traits. So you don't do not start with uh, your character with a fixed personality. You will develop your personality in game, and each personality trait is gonna give you uh, abilities mm -hmm. also. Um, and about the other traits, the learned traits, I would say they are much more like maneuvers. Uh, maneuvers you learn uh, by, uh, of course, leveling up your path. Uh, so they are connected to your path. For example, for O'Neill fans, there's dream interpretation, which gives you more hints into your prophetic dreaming. Uh, for warrior, there are many uh, combat maneuver you can select, uh, like charging, uh, charge or uh, accurate aim, uh, multi attack, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And each trait has several levels. Leveling, le leveling up your species or leveling, leveling up your path, uh, your traits will level up too. So they will increase in power. Uh, and what I'm telling is the standard way to play this game. Mm -hmm. There's even uh, an easy way to play it and an hardcore way to play it, uh, where your level up uh, is uh, slower and uh, you won't be so powerful <laughs> at the end. Uh, just like in the standard uh, version of the game is. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, also different possibilities uh, uh, in base, uh, based on your uh, game style, you know? All right, that make, that that definitely makes sense. Um, the other, And since, since you mentioned hardcore, I wanted to talk a bit on the combat. Now, given... Given the <laughs> given the approach that you're going with this game, of the, <laughs> of this is this is more of a of this is more of a fight for survival than anything else. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> I can, and the and the fact that there's an entire section dedicated to degrees of damages. Would it uh -huh. be would it be fair to would it be fair of me to say that um this is a game that is meant to be highly lethal? <laughs> oh yeah, man. Also because you got locations, mm -hmm. uh, so you're not a big sack of health points. Uh, everybody else needs to eat. Uh, you gotta uh, learn uh, what's the best way uh, to take down your opponents, and um, the way that lets you spend less system points as possible, of course. Just like in nature happens. Uh, you know, when there are uh, I thought about this game design, thinking about how predators uh, act in nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, think about a, a big feline, uh, just like a tiger or a lion. Uh, when this lion sees a gazelle um, in, the, uh, in his uh, settlement, um, he internally uh, chooses whether it's okay to hunt it or if uh, it's not something he chooses uh, uh, willingly, it's something uh, which happens automatically, of course, inside an animal. Um, or if the energy is gonna spend to get that prey won't be, it's gonna be too much. Uh, and uh, eating that prey won't give him back the energy he spent. No, I don't know if I'm clear, uh, mm -hmm. but that's the point of my game design. Uh, you need to spend your points, your resources wisely uh, and hope that afterwards you're going to get those energy back from what you did. Mm -hmm. If not, survival will fail and you're going to die. And be, f and be someone else's lunch that will nourish them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's nature. Mm -hmm. Cruel as it seems, as it looks. Yep. Now, <clears throat> taking that. Now, when that's also also because uh, that, uh, I also want to say um, our bestiary, our uh, the Xenoscape uh, is composed by two books. You're gonna you can buy now for a very low price on Kickstarter. Uh, 
Um, and the second one is uh, all about creators. And each a monster, each animal, each plant, which, which is going to be uh, described in that book, uh, will also feature uh, the typical tactics that uh, that uh, species, that specimen uh, will um, uh, will adopt in a combat situation, for example, mm -hmm. and even the resources that uh, such uh, species can give you uh, when when killed, for example. Mm -hmm. So, what can you do with your skin? Uh, how much food you can get? from uh, its uh, meat or uh, if it's a plant or from uh, its body uh, and so on. So even the crafting part of this game is very, uh, very deeply developed. Which I do, I do appreciate since um, obviously with a, with a system like this, you're, you, and especially given how bartering is more important than, than typical trade. Um, yeah. You you couldn't have a you couldn't have a shop list in this kind in this kind of game. It would have to be. <laughs> it would have. It, uh, yeah. I mean, you could you could certainly have list of potential weapon archetypes, but I'd imagine that two pe that two people who have something that looks l something that looks to be the equivalent of a um of an axe or a knife. Um, oh yeah. It's going. They're going to have different parameters based on what they're made out of. Ah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Metal is like having uh, having a metal weapon is like having a magical weapon in Dungeons and Dragons in this setting, uh, because of its dur durability, because of the higher damage uh, simply it uh, inflicts, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, about that, there's a very uh, specific and brand new take on role playing. Uh, if you uh, gonna role play a mecha suit, mecha suits are uh, robots are cyborgs coming from the old uh, human empire era, mm -hmm. uh, which were built in order to help humans. And how they did that? Uh, they did that by transforming into exoskeletons that humans can wear uh, and that can help them in different tasks. So if you play a mecha suit uh, during combat scenes, you're going to transform yourself in a, into an equipment. Uh, so you're going to transform yourself into a power-up for another player, which I think is a very brand new take on uh, role-playing. Uh, so mecha suits are very suitable for all those players that are that goes like, no, I don't like combat situation. Okay, you're going to transform into a power-up for your bodies, and you don't have to do nothing if you want, don't want to. Uh, so you can become, uh, for example, a... Uh, um, uh, machine gun exoskeleton or uh, a protective exoskeleton, uh, a jetpack. Uh, you can transform into jetpack mode or uh, into life assistance mode. Uh, so it's uh, it's another way to uh, to play. I would say, mm -hmm. and that does that does bring me to a to a question I had on the. Um, on the different types of species what now obviously this is going to be this is going to be very determinant on what sort on what um sort of path that they pick but what's but um but what sort of um what sort of playstyles would cert would different species paths tend to favor or spe or species path a little species paths a little bit more um generalized uh, well, uh, um, as I told you, I, uh, I prefer to let total customization to, to player. Mm -hmm. So uh, selecting a species does not mean you cannot do a specific, uh, a specific path. Uh, so you can, do, uh, you can mix up everything in this game. Uh, but, of course, uh, there are certain traditions that some species have that are stronger than uh, other ones. Uh, so, for example, a Nautropoid warrior will be very different from a Shrub warrior uh, as a tradition. Uh, Arthropoids usually are not sentient beings which dwells in very huge nests, uh, which have, have been structured with our anthropologists 
uh, just like you know the caste society system from Indian culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, mix that with medieval Japan. Okay, so right. you get a very a very weird mix. But if you think about insect colonies, they work like that. There's a queen. There are uh, workers. There are warriors. They are very very divided into castes. And sometimes one arthropoid develops uh, a brain which is too much larger and uh, it develops free will and those will be the players. And they are maybe trained all their life to be warrior, just like uh, samurai did. Uh, but at a certain point, maybe they become some sort of ronin, mm -hmm. ronin-like characters. So uh, they have this kind of bushido uh, in their mind, in their feral mind, which they keep on following all of their lives if they were born warriors. And that's something very specific for arthropoid warrior, while other species have different take-ons on uh, all these different parts. That, may, that, definitely makes, that definitely makes sense to me. Now, with the with the uh, Kickstarter, with the Kickstarter, you you had you had initially set a goal of um f of five thousand euro, and it's currently double that, um ten point four ten point four thousand. Which congratulations on that, and your sh you are shoot, and the uh, Kickstarter is is planned to end at, you know, February eleventh. Now, presume now um presuming that. That ev that everything goes everything goes smoothly with the after effect of the stuff that happens after a Kickstarter f um, finishes its finishes its period. Um, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window of Xenoscape? Okay, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, we set it at the end of this year, but I hope we can do it uh, in advance. Uh, I mean. I hope by October, November, uh, to have it finished and printed. Because uh, I already wrote so much stuff, uh, which is uh, which only needs final editing already. That I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it in a very very few months from now. Uh, from the end of Kickstarter, of course, at least. Uh, so. Uh, our hope is to give it to you all uh, with all the stretch goals that we are going to unlock in the next days because there's many and there are, there are really, really good stretch goals, I would say, because it's something that adds up to the game. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing which is uh, not relevant to the game itself. So you will get no stupid pins, no stupid posters, stuff like that. Uh, everything we're gonna unlock would be new content, new adventures, new paths, uh, new species, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of things uh, still to go, and uh, we want to give you uh, the the best we can uh, in those two books. Yeah, and speak speaking of that, um, what would you say the page count for the core book and the um... For the for the three for the three um, books being art book, Xenoscape, and um, Legends would be respectively, if you had to if okay. you had to estimate. Uh, well, yes, we have estimate for the two main books, the mm -hmm. two physical books, with, which will be uh, Traditions and Creatures, mm -hmm. uh, which are gonna be uh, two hundred twenty pages books, uh, which we can expand up to two hundred fifty, maybe more. We don't know, depending on the stretch goals. Mm -hmm. While Legends, uh, which is going to be the first uh, expansion, uh, which uh, is going to collect all the adventures that we are going to unlock through stretch goals, through our fan base, and, uh, and so on. Uh, about that, I really don't know, man, because <laughs> it really all depends on how the Kickstarter goes. So mm -hmm. that's going to be... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a digital file, so uh, that's no problem for anybody, I think. And I'm ge I'm guessing that the, that um it will t 
that that particular one will t will um will t will be will one thousand daisy one yeah. thousand of <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i sure hope not i don't i um i feel bad for anybody who has to deal with a one thousand page physical book um <laughs> No, but what what I was gonna say is that is can is I think I can assume that the PDF version will be properly um bookmarked. Uh oh yeah 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 sure sure sure. Uh my people on uh, uh on the pagination uh, part of the of of this job are gonna do everything uh, uh to give uh, the best digital version possible. Mm -hmm. Uh so it's gonna be on drive through RPG also. Uh, yeah, and we, uh, we have, we, yeah, and if, I realize this seems like a small and obvious thing, but some people do. F some people unfortunately end up forgetting this. Um, mm -hmm. Will will there be an index? I mainly bring this oh, up yeah. because part it's become kind of a meme with with me that I always need to have an index. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 just sure, man. Uh, also, uh, also planned. Um, I don't know how to call it in English, uh, um, a word index, uh, I would say, at the end of the book. Uh, so uh, if it comes to your mind, OK, I need to find grappling. But mm -hmm. grappling is it's very specific. It's not in the initial index, which only gives you a separation into paragraphs and chapters. Uh, so you can check the final index uh, where Every word is marked uh, page by page where it appears on the on the book. All right, that makes that makes sense. Oh. Yeah, you can find that in uh, other role playing games, just like for example Dungeons and Dragons, which uh, having many many customization options. Uh, it's needed. It's needed. Yeah. For me, for me, I ha I harp on these kind of things mainly because I am very, very big on navigation. Um, oh, okay, okay. Navigation okay, with, can. Uh, I, I can spoiler. Uh, we are gonna uh, set up uh, um, four different kind of helping uh, windows uh, mm -hmm. in the game. So the pagination would be uh, very similar to the free quick start that everybody can download now from our group. So mm -hmm. uh, please, everybody do that because of your feedback uh, is gold for us. And uh, um, there will be a lateral column uh, where that we are going to fill up with these navigation um, windows. Uh, one type will be for the um, creation part. So if you're reading this chapter, and you are in the character creation step, uh, check out that specific window mm -hmm. because there will be a, a resume of what's needed. Uh, a role-playing uh, tip uh, windows with all the tips that you need to role-play that specific things that described in the chapter and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah, I do care for navigation a lot too. So uh, I set up those things in order to help people uh, find the best way and the fastest way to navigate through our books. Yeah, and the as a as a bit of a as a bit of a um as a bit of a fi as a final note. Now, obviously. Because of recent events, a lot of people have shifted to um, virtual tabletop. Has that been has has that been something you guys have taken under consideration? Man, yesterday uh, I, I was really praised out when I seen uh, the Kickstarter uh, getting to the goal in very few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but also because one of my uh, uh, colleague sent me the preview of the Roll20 uh, editable sheet for Xenoscape. Only work in progress, but we're going to have it. Mm -hmm. We are going to have it. We already have it for Urban Heroes, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have it for Xenoscape too. Uh, also, you can uh, um, already download uh, the uh, editable sheet uh, for uh, Xenoscape in English 
uh, mm -hmm. from uh, our group or Facebook Facebook group. Oh. So yes, yes, uh, we try to give uh, everything we can also for digital uh, gaming because uh, nowadays with this uh, epidemic on, it's uh, really important. Yeah, and it's something that really saved my life. I roughing uh, online during this, this bad bad time. Yeah, <laughs> and to be fair, to be fair, I think that I think that a I think that a shift towards um, virtual tabletop was inevitable. It's just this. It's just twenty twenty yeah. um, was an accelerant. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree on that. I agree on that. Uh, okay, I I always mm. prefer to meet with my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, role playing is a social game, and meeting in person, uh, uh, I think it's better for role playing, for acting during role playing, and the stuff. But uh, I found uh, I enjoyed my time a lot also role, play, role playing online. Uh, so I think both is good. Yeah, and both is good. With and giving more more instruments for mm -hmm. people to. Uh, have a better experience in playing online is something everybody should do in our sector. Mm -hmm. Well, all things said, I will be I will certainly be looking forward to how Xenoscape um, grows and de grows and develops. Um, yeah. With <laughs> with that in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for for taking the time out of your schedule to come up to the temple and enjoy the particular bit of um, craziness that happens around here? Okay, the temple is a very good place. Mm -hmm. I found myself uh, very good in this place, mm -hmm. so I can't stay. Can I stay? <laughs> Any <t> anytime, <laughs> you, anytime you see fit to, c to come back, the door is always open. As I often say around nice. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> okay, so we get along very mm -hmm. good. I oh, would yeah. say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Midra. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time too. Yep, and of course, and, uh, please, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, everybody, mm -hmm. please uh, check out our uh, group on Facebook, Xenoscape Extreme mm -hmm. Survival Sci-Fi RPG. Uh, download the Quick Start free Quick Start version of the game, and check out the Kickstarter page, of course. And let's fund that game. Let's unlock those stretch goals because they are waiting for you guys. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>